Welcome to the Chow Time Pod. It's your host Red. I got a video today from Ash on the Line. Uh, it's a it's a woman that disliked KS when she first heard him, but then realized that the advice that he was giving was spot on and changed her ways and actually found someone. So this is actually an awesome story of uh, how women can actually turn around. So please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. And let's get to the chow. It's chow time. I used to be argumentative, quick to anger, disrespectful, and honestly, I wanted problems always. Problems always. I love that meme. I don't want peace. I want problems always. <laughs> That's the best meme. <laughs> Like most women, when I first seen the Kevin Samuels Average at Best video, I thought to myself, why is he so mean? What makes him think he can talk to us like this? Because he talks to men like 10 times worse than he talks to women. I held that same viewpoint for a while and thought maybe he just needs to change his tone. But what most people don't know is Kevin Samuels talked to men like this for three years before yep. he even started talking to women. Focus on cultivating that relationship. With I'll what? Back. Cultivating a relationship with what? With getting out there and getting a relationship. You don't have anybody. <laughs> Sir, this is unacceptable. Yeah, I know. I hope you didn't come here looking for sympathy. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, do you have both your limbs? Yes, sir. Then why don't you have a job? <laughs> Negro, you need a job. Yes, sir. Get off YouTube, get off Instagram, Get off TikTok, get off your ass, and go to fuck to work. Yes, sir. Why'd I do that? Because, guys, look, we gotta call bullshit when we see it. Yep. Yes, sir. So why does the divorce rate drop dramatically for black couples as well over an income of $250,000? I didn't know that. Maybe because you're not part of that group. <laughs> Are you being serious, bro? Um, I am, but the finances is definitely something no, that I'm no, working No, 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 hell no, no. If anything, you should be happy that I'm talking about what I'm talking about because it's highlighting the problem of hypergamy out of, out of control. I'm happy and I think it's necessary. Men knew that it was just brutal honesty and some of them even called back to thank him. Yep. Whereas when he started talking to women, they took it pretty personal. As women, oftentimes we think with our feelings first, whereas men are more likely to think with logic. Sometimes you have to be willing to hear the ugly truth, and you can't become the best version of yourself if everyone's afraid to call you out on your problems. Kevin Samuels just wasn't afraid. In the infamous Average at Best video, a woman called in and interrupted the topic he was discussing for the evening. At first, he refused to talk to her. Yeah, I did the a reaction to that video too. Her, she begged him to discuss the problems she was having in her dating life. Reluctantly, he decided to talk to her, and throughout the entire 23-minute video, he told her what she could do to improve. But she was in denial about everything he was saying. Yep. Then finally, at the end of the video, he delivered that infamous line. You're average looking at best. She wanted a man that made over six figures because that's what she made. But what she didn't realize is a man that makes six figures doesn't want a woman that makes that. He's going to want a homemaker, a yep. wife. You've probably only seen highlights of him going off on women, or maybe someone you trust told you that he's an asshole. But when you watch over 50 of his live streams like I have, you really start to understand why he spoke the way that he did. If I'm being honest, today us women are just so used to being coddled. Yep. We're constantly told that we're queens and we've been conditioned to not take queen. any criticism. We think we're perfect. We think we're special. We think we're the prize. And we receive no accountability for our actions. Nope. Before Kevin's None passing, whatsoever. 12 couples got married from his Facebook group. That number has increased and doesn't even count the couples whose relationships improved or men and women who took his advice and got engaged talking about making people feel i don't make you feel anything you're in control of your own emotions i think that's an unfair characterization by anything else because if we flip that up there are people who make money off of making women feel good and lie to them mm -hmm. there are people who openly pander to women telling them everything is okay and live false lives in their face and women can see this and continue to do it so i always say judge things on the outcome there have been more videos on YouTube saying Kevin Samuels has saved my marriage. I'm better. I'm married today because of Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels' advice works. Uh, I talk about, you know, 
this group that I had on Facebook where people are getting together, people can focus on what they want to. Kevin Samuels recognized the increasing divide between men and women, and in his own way, he was trying to fix that. Yep. You may think he was an asshole, and to be honest, maybe he was. <laughs> but assholes get shit done. He cut past right. the filler, he cut past the coddling, and he told us the truth. I'm a better woman because of it, and I thank him for that. Because to be honest, I used to be a little crazy. Here's four <laughs> reasons why Kevin- Used to be. Kevin Samuels was right, and modern women are wrong. Number one, Kevin Samuels highlighted the toxicity of modern women. Modern women are those who are highly career driven, have dominant personalities, believe they're superior to men, don't respect men. They may treat men just as an accessory or as kind of like a trophy. They'll brag about how they're educated or independent and don't need a man. They may be quick to anger and have bad attitudes, especially towards potential suitors. They may not take criticism very well and they view themselves as the prize. They think that they're perfect and they may dream of being part of a power couple. Yep. Typically, modern women... Yeah, as soon as you hear a woman say they want to be a power couple, just, just walk away, man. Just walk away. ...will want the men that they can't have. For example, they'll want men that have lots of options or men that show them little to no attention. A lot of modern women will say that they prefer tall men, six foot and above, without knowing that the average height for a man is 5'9". The more experience they have with dating, the more unrealistic their standards become. And the reason I stopped matchmaking is because I, I can't handle female clients. I was a matchmaker that matched females. And listen, what I it was such a valuable lesson for me because what I learned is that the average woman doesn't really want just a good man. She doesn't want a husband. What she's really wanting are these standards or ideas that she has of what a man is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But this is nothing what men are. Nope. Th this is not realistic. You're comparing good men to, I can't say this, F boys. I'm just going <laughs> to say it. You're comparing good men to the men that you've experienced previously who were not ready to be husbands, yep. that you were just dating, messing around with. He's supposed to look like this. He's supposed to act like that. Oh, you know what? He's too corny. He's, he likes me too much. He texts me too much. Yeah, because the bo the men that you were messing with, you weren't even the only one. They don't get, they don't text you right back. They don't call you right back because they have a more just like you. So a man comes along that is crazy about you and is interested in you. And I'm sorry to say, you have friend zoned the men that really you're compatible with, the men that would make a wonderful husband. A lot of you have friend zoned the good dude who's ready to be a husband and a father give you some pretty babies if you get a pretty boy and they super fine and they in the mirror more than you you got a problem <laughs> but the problem is you looking at visuals and thinking that men are supposed to look like us or be just as gorgeous as us yeah we are not as gorgeous as women we're just the ugly uh, sex between the two that's for sure no, that's not how God created this whole scenario. Less than 14% of the entire American male population is over six foot, just height. And if you add in what he looks like, like looking like Idris and making money like this and that, honey, look, you looking for the come up for real because um, I don't know where he's at. These match, I was matchmaking. I would be like, man, I would go find these incredible men and they would be like, Oh, mm, I would never date him. It's like, it's like he's got to be perfect, but yep. you're not perfect. You got issues and unresolved issues and you got a temper and you're bossy and you're you controlling and men don't even like to be around you long term. Mm -hmm. You run everybody away. You think you're so much the ish that you're bougie and vain and stuck up. And men don't like it. And you wonder why you can't keep a man. You wonder why nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> she's just like tearing women up right now. Your are standardizing you right out of the game. Um, I'm, I'm not going to settle. But in the meantime, boo, you're not even half the things that, aren't, that you have on your list as requirements for a man. Nope. You're not even half those things. But you want that in a man. Because until a man is ready, he is not going to choose you. It don't, you could do, it doesn't matter how you put it down in the bedroom. It doesn't matter what kind of values. It doesn't matter how big your butt. Yeah. Men control access to relationships and women control access to sex. That's the balance between the two.
what is and what you look like. Until a man is ready, he is not settling down. And if you do mess up and get one of these dudes on a string and get him to marry you, you notice I said get him to marry you, you're gonna be in so much trouble because he ain't gonna change. No. A lot of modern women have been told while growing up to just focus on becoming financially stable on their own, whether that means learning a trade or pursue higher mm -hmm. education. And while they're doing this, they're told not to worry about men. There's nothing wrong with reaching your dreams and having goals for yourself. However, if marriage and family is a goal for you, you have to make dating a priority. But we'll talk more about that later in this video. Danger zone. A lot of modern women who are in their 30s, 40s, or even older complain that they can't find the right man. They think they're holding out for the one, but the dating pool just gets smaller and smaller. Yep. Okay, there are 8 million people in this city. Sounds like a lot, right? Half of them are women. So, 4 million men. And then you gotta have some age limits. Let's say over 20, keep it legal. under 40. Keep it sexy. Now it's a million. Right. We're talking about a million guys. But... Half of them are married. 10% are gay. I want someone college educated, not too ugly, so. There's your boyfriend. I wish. He's gotta be taller than me. And he's gotta want kids. She knows. So. She knows. She's, Modern women a want of alpha males, person. AKA high value men. But what they don't realize is a majority of these men are already married. Also, chances are their wives were there before the money and success. They managed the household and took care of the kids while he worked overtime to get to where he's at. Yep. Modern women want all the reward of a high value man, but none of the work. They've most likely failed in the dating market because they're only interested in players. And now they assume all men are like that. This is what we talk about, man. Yeah, all women think to seem to say, oh, well, men are trash. Yeah, all the ones you deal with. That's why they're all trash. Modern women will typically attract beta males or simps. These yep. type of men will allow modern women to treat them like shit. They're partially to blame for the bad attitudes of modern women because they're willing to put up with the disrespect and make these women think that they're perfect. Even though they can easily have a beta male, they want the alpha male who yep. isn't willing to put up with their toxicity for long. If this describes you, then I hate to break it to you, but these men are not fully attracted to you. If they're single <laughs> or willing to cheat on their wives, then they may sleep with you. They may even date you for a short period of time, but they're not gonna see you as marriageable. No now dice. that you know about the toxicity of modern women, we can move on to number two. Kevin Samuels helped women understand men and what men want. Yes. To understand men, you need to be able to see the- This was the, probably the biggest issue with Kevin Samuels, I think. Every time he told women what, what what men wanted, they just didn't want to believe him or thought that they are what men want. They just don't understand the man mind or the, the mind of men. And they think we pick our mates the way women pick their mates. The world from their perspective. Men don't voice their feelings because half the time they end up upsetting their woman when they do. And then they have to console her about how his feelings made her feel. Yep, deal with this a lot. You're only hurting yourself when you don't try to understand. To get the man you want, you have to learn about him. What does he like in a woman? What does he need from a woman? If you've been single for a while, then you may think there's no good men. But according to Kevin Samuels, 54% of black males are single and childless. Yep. There's some genuinely nice guys out here, but modern women don't want them. Nope. Also, only one in four black women will get married in their lifetime. And 75% of those marriages will end in divorce. Damn, the black demographic in this looks so bad. One out of four women get married and they have an 85% chance of divorcing. Jeez, this is the black communities. It's going to like disappear through these types of marriages and numbers. Women file for divorce 85% of the time. It was a mutual decision. Who filed for divorce? It was it was me. Who filed for divorce? I um Who filed for divorce? It was it, Who filed for divorce? I can't necessarily Who filed for divorce? I did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, rest in peace, Godfather. 
You need to know what men are looking for to attract better quality men. Contrary to what you might have been told, men don't care about our degrees or the money we make. They know they're not entitled to our money, so why would they care? Yeah. After I got my MBA, I thought men were gonna be lined up trying to date me. <laughs> Anytime I would kind of brag about it, they didn't care. They would literally look at me like this. Also, don't expect a man to squeeze into your life while you work on your goals because he'll just find somebody else. My boyfriend told me he wouldn't care if I worked at Walmart just as long as I was the same person with the same personality. And if a guy does care about your money, run. This is where I think a lot of men don't realize. Like, if he actually does care about your money, yeah, it's actually a problem on him. That means he is looking to be dependent on you. Something else you might find surprising about men, they're willing to go down in looks for peace if they have to. I used to date this guy and I was a total asshole to him. One day he just broke up with me and I didn't know why. And then I seen he was dating this other girl. I was really confused by it. And once they stopped talking, I asked him, why did he break up with me for her? He said he didn't find her as attractive. However, she was nicer to him. On a first date, most- Damn, kudos to you for actually asking your ex after them, even very respectfully after they broke up and the reason why she's trying to learn she's trying to actually play the game well enough to find good mates right unlike many other women most men know that they should pay for the meal but that doesn't mean you should openly expect them to pay or be ungrateful about it yep. also don't go on dates for free food I'm totally guilty of this. If you're not romantically interested in him. Women. <laughs> Why go on a date with men just to get free food? You do realize that's kind of a form of prostitution, right? Doesn't mean we're, I mean, yeah, we're not having sex with you or something, but you're trading your time for someone's money. Just saying. And then don't go on the date in the first place. He's spending his time and resources to get to know you. And men value their time and resources more than anything. Also, Correct. men are becoming less and less likely to go on dinner dates because they're tired of being used for free food. When women do this, they're ruining it for the girl that actually likes him because now he's less likely to take women on dates. Facts. We see power couples like Jay-Z and Beyonce, Will and Jada, if you still want to count them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And nah. we think that's how relationships are supposed to be. Power couple shit. These type of couples are heavily glorified in the black community. <laughs> they are. However, they're quite rare. I don't think it's just the black community. I hear it from a lot of women. They want to be power couples. They're looking for a man to be a power couple with. It's, I don't think it's just the black community. You'd have way better luck finding an average man, and the average man earns 45,000 annually. If you want a high value man who makes over 100K annually, then you should know that this is only about 10% of all men. High value men are men with means and influence, and they typically don't reach their financial peak until their 40s. In relationships, us women value financial stability, so we think that's what men want too. However, they don't value that. Men just want peace and cooperation from us. Most modern women want financial stability, but they lack the peace and cooperation. Yep. You would need to be a homemaker slash nurturer. Also, you wanna to strive to be fit, feminine, and friendly. Yes, I said fit. Men are visual. It's just important to take care of yourself. Go to the gym on a regular basis. Try to watch what you eat. Men value women who value themselves. It's funny because men know this. This is why there's less overweight men than there are overweight women. Like overweight women almost double the number of overweight men. And the only reason to me this is the case is men need to attract women right women can be overweight and they're still going to attract men that's why they let themselves go where men have to keep themselves somewhat attractive to be able to pull women if a man was overweight but stated that he wanted a woman with a supermodel body type you would think he was delusional he however is. four out of five african-american women are either overweight or obese you guys hear that men Four out of five African-American women are overweight or obese. Holy cow. That is 80% of women 
in the African community that are overweight and obese. That's a problem. And a lot of them would prefer a partner that's in shape. Is that not delusional? Why is it okay for women to have this standard of health for men, but men aren't allowed to? What am I bringing to the table? Yeah. I showed up to the table. Jesus, let me let me just move my head real quick so you guys can actually see what she looks like. Cause uh I mean she's the size of a table. That's for sure. The two really important areas Ooh. for men what they what you men look for, right? Yeah. Are, you know, is she fit and is she feminine? Right. Both of those things she two does strikes. not have. Two, and nope. those are two major things. Right. So if <laughs> You it's just, have it's just delusion. Yeah, so if you don't have those two main things that mm -hmm. men are not, that's all they're asking for, and you're over here asking for the world, it's like, you got to be realistic at some point, yeah. right? So what do you really expect? Could you imagine a man call? Isn't it sad that men are asking for two, three goddamn things that are like non-negotiables? And women's lists are like as big as like the Campbell's Soup freaking ingredients list and shit? Like, come on now calling in and saying these things like let's okay. let's just imagine for a moment a guy calling in 600 pounds overweight and saying i need a supermodel i need a 22 year old supermodel no but what, <laughs> what they would say no nah, but it's different for guys though because you can be overweight and if you make a lot of money right yeah and then then you can like you can get the model because all she's going to want you for is your money Right, but that's what I'm saying. A guy has to bring value to the table, yeah. which is his resources, his money, right? Yeah. Her value is her beauty, but yeah. she's saying, F all that. <laughs> Take me for who I am and give me a one percentile man. Yeah. Yep. And obviously it doesn't work that way. I don't know. Uh, As women, we're born with our best assets, youth and beauty, but yep. these don't last forever. And being beautiful isn't anything unique. You literally just have to have hot parents and be born. And even if you look pretty young for your <laughs> age, wrong. most likely a man will want children of his own. And if he has the choice to have kids with a younger woman versus an older woman, he's gonna pick the younger woman. Geriatric pregnancy. This is a thing, another thing that women like, don't like seem to want to understand. Like when you look at things logically, why would we want an older woman to have kids with if we want a lot of kids? Plus, an older woman is going to have compl complications when having kids. This is, these, are, these are all issues that and, and things that men actually keep in mind. And women don't even keep in mind themselves. They don't even keep in mind that they're in their 30s, 30, 35s, and they're going to have geriatric pregnancy, and that they might pass, uh, they might die during childbirth. They don't even think about that. Men think about this for them. This is why men are picking women within the correct age ranges to have kids with. You know, if they're not, that means that they are desperate and they love this person, but you know, they're willing to give it a try. But most men are actually looking out for the women's health because we don't want to have our wife die during childbirth. What's the whole point of having kids if you don't have a mother to fucking raise them? Pregnancy starts at age 35, whereas men can be in their 40s, 50s, <clears throat> 60s, and still start families if they wanted to. In this realm, we're at a disadvantage. So like I said, women are born with their best assets, youth and beauty, whereas men have to earn their best assets, finance and stability. And yep. when they do earn these assets, do you think they're going to go for the gorgeous 34-year-old with an attitude problem or the cute 25-year-old who's cooperative? Think about it. No thought necessary on my part. Provider males slash high value men deal with dominant personalities and pressure all day in the office. Do you really think they want to come home and deal with an argumentative woman? Yep. And honestly, average men don't want to deal with that either. <laughs> but anyways, as Michelle Amore stated in her Kevin Samuels advice got me engaged video. They can't be at work dealing with the pressures and things that they're dealing with out there and then come home and be fighting a whole war zone as well. It doesn't work that way. You'll quickly get left. The only way a guy will be willing to put up with your attitude is if he's a simp, he doesn't have many options, or he doesn't have his life together. Therefore, you're not the prize. High value men are. Yep. Typically, men are pretty race loyal, but black men aren't going to wait for black women to want them. She's right. I think men are actually the most race loyal compared to women, especially in the Asian community. Asian men usually go after Asian women. 
a lot of Asian women go after other races, and it seems like um, black women seem to go for a lot of other races too. Or respect them. They want to marry black women, but if they can't, they'll start to look outside of their race. And it's already happening. And if they decide not to look outside of their race, they may become womanizers. And then ironically, modern women will want. I think that's what a lot of men become, womanizers, you know, because there's not enough women out there to meet their criteria to want to get married. So they just become womanizers. Them. We think we have it really hard as women. However, men typically aren't allowed to show emotion or they're deemed weak by society. Yep. There are leaders, there are protectors, and they have to have their shit together by a certain age yep. or else they're viewed as losers. Yep. Okay, let's move on to number three. Kevin Samuels taught women how to navigate dating for their own benefit. As we get older, there's less and less places to meet good men. There's typically no good men at bars and clubs because no men that go here aren't looking for serious relationships. Also, dating apps can be so superficial. You can't judge someone just based on how they look. What if they're just not photogenic and looking good isn't synonymous with being a good person? <laughs> it's funny because I'm horrible with photos and I'm definitely not photogenic. So. <laughs> Honestly, you'll have better luck finding someone who has mutual friends with you or who you've probably friend zoned. Also, another point that yeah, the friend zone is a huge zone that you'll have plenty of mates. That Michelle Amore brought up in her video was how there's a difference between a woman with a career and a career woman. She referenced this book that I'll put up on the screen, but just to summarize, career women will neglect their dating life and are more interested in casual hookups. This can mm -hmm. be detrimental after years and years of this behavior if you know you want marriage and family one day. If you do, then stop neglecting your dating life. There's a lot of highly successful career women in their 40s and 50s who would trade it all for a family. And like I said, yeah, more and more of those stories are coming up. I just did one on uh, that one um, CNN newscaster that's 52, quit her job, moved back with her parents and adopted a child and is the happiest that she's ever been. So earlier there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a successful career but if you do want love you have to make dating and working on yourself a priority if you know any people that are happily married look at the quality of the wives in those marriages do you fit a wife role let the situationships go and stop giving out your number to just anybody give it out to men that you genuinely like or that you really want to get to know and also don't just go after high value men because like i said they're only 10 percent of all men and typically they're going to go after women who are are younger don't have kids and don't have any emotional damage or baggage yep they just have more options go on a date with the guy that genuinely likes you and if there's chemistry there see where it goes stop looking for the small stuff that you don't like you're never gonna find a guy that meets a hundred percent of all your requirements right like i remember seeing all those ick videos like and some of the icks are so fucking stupid oh if he orders this particular drink that's a no so he drinks a certain drink. Why does that fucking matter about the guy's personality? He's probably gonna still take care of you, is he not? Like, what the fuck? Why does that drink matter? Most women want love, companionship, and marriage. So why are modern women fighting it? Get into yeah. therapy to understand your triggers and why your past relationships failed or why you've been single for so long. If you feel comfortable enough, ask your exes what it was like dating you and don't become defensive based off what they say. Just hold yourself accountable. Make sure you're the best version of yourself. Get in shape and learn how to be more feminine. Also, stop asking your single friends or your friends in toxic relationships. Yeah, those are the worst people to be getting advice from. For dating advice, ask your happily married friends or your friends that are in healthy relationships. Now what I'm about to say is going to be a little more controversial, but a woman should submit to her husband, but not in the way that it's been generalized. Most people think a woman submitting is her being a second class citizen to yeah, I mean, colleges indoctrinate women nowadays to think that, you know, being a housewife is literally being a slave. They literally compare the two to being a slave, which it has never been like that ever. To her husband. However, it's really just about letting your man be a man. Stop trying to dominate the relationship or control him. There should be mutual love, respect, and admiration for each other. Men and women are equal, but we have our differences that complement each other. And lastly, be with and accept more quality love from your partner. As women, we have to stop coddling each other's feelings, tell the truth, and hold each other accountable. Number four, do. Kevin Samuels helped me improve my life and relationship. 
Therapy and watching Kevin Samuels really helped me to grow as a woman. Before therapy, I was single for three years, and when I had issues with dating, I would always blame the men. Yet I was the contributing factor in all my failed dates and relationships. I'm not saying that my exes were perfect, but I wasn't either, and I attracted these men. I used to be argumentative, quick to anger, disrespectful, and honestly, I wanted problems always. <laughs> I don't want peace. I want problems always. <laughs> She admits it. I examined uh, I the relationships I saw growing up and on TV, and I thought arguing and disrespect were just part of a relationship. Post-therapy, yeah. I realized my faults more and more, and also as I watched Kevin Samuels. Before watching his content, my boyfriend and I would argue a lot more often. He would try to explain, but I would just look for holes in his story to keep the argument going because I was mad. I was thinking with my feelings rather than logic. I oh yeah, I know this feeling quite well. I noticed a shift in my relationship when I started to do things for him to make him happy rather than just thinking of myself. He reciprocates the things that I do for him and we're in a much better place. When we're broken, we attract broken people, which is why therapy is so important. You are who you attract. Kevin Samuels' videos changed my perspective on dating and ultimately changed my life. I've never been happier with my life and in my relationship. It's not all about my partner. It's not all about me. It's about us. That's all I have for this video. Here are some YouTubers I like in relation to Kevin Samuels. I'll link all of them in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a like and a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't How's that chow? Rest in peace, Godfather. Like, the man saved so many people's relationships. It's... It's amazing like this woman coming on this is, she's not the only one that comes on and talks about Kevin and how her dating life and her relationships has gotten better because she took his advice I think if more women were a little bit more open to some criticism uh, more more women would be in this boat you know we talk about women changing or you know realizing they messed up in their 30s and stuff if they were as genuine as her and went through the the work that she had to go through to fix herself and like be a good mate, I don't think most, most men would have no issues with it, even if she had a pretty bad past. But I don't think most women are genuinely regretful and uh, take accountability like she does once they hit those ages though. So. Uh, again, I'll link everything down below so you guys can give her support and uh, subscribe. And uh, please like subscribe down below for me. And I really appreciate that. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao, ciao.